let's talk about it. So this article is high level, um, a historical view of herbal medicines, herbal abortifacients, um, as really a, um, a normal and well-documented part of uh, everyday life dating back a number of centuries. I think you maybe even go back to like fifth century or something like that. Um, so I don't think, um, you know, I don't want to belabor the point around why this is uh, an especially timely issue, right? Um, I think it's fairly obvious, but I would like to know about um, your journey into this research, um, especially with respect to um, the the U.S. Supreme Court uh, making um, safe healthcare inaccessible for for women. Yeah, um, so, yeah. I mean, like you said, I think the context is fairly um, apparent. I think what was really interesting to me is, so I wrote this piece with um, my colleague, Dr. Ashley Buchanan, and we had worked together at Dumbarton Oaks, where we, which is a museum in Washington, D.C., and we were researching kind of plant humanities um, and different uses of plants in herbals. Um, and at the same time, I had also been working at the Folger Shakespeare Library, which um, houses a, a one of the biggest collections of early modern English manuscript recipe books, and Ashley actually now works there too. Um, and what was so interesting is when you look at these herbals and when you look at these recipe books, it, it's just there. I mean, no one's saying you know this is an abortion, but but you start to learn what is an amenagogue, what stops menstruation, what could potentially you know draw down the menses, as people say, or um, kind of expel a fetus. Um, and, and so once you kind of learn this new language and this new way of looking for things, it's pretty apparent um, as a historian. But what was so interesting to me regarding the Dobbs case is that in the, you know, in the decision, you have some pretty shoddy history saying it wasn't a thing, which I think is totally, I mean, as apparent from the article, that's just completely not true. But what was interesting is there was also all of these other law review journal articles coming out by uh, lawyers and law students and, and, and kind of people in the legal profession basically saying, well, we did a search of, you know, the word abortion and it was only mentioned 10 times. Um, and, and thus it must not, thus, you know, the Supreme Court was right. It, it was not such a thing. And as historians to me and Ashley, that was a wild kind of proposition. I mean, not only is that not true, but it's also just not the way you approach history. Um, like you have to really think about the context about how people would be writing these things and you need kind of careful study. And so our impetus was kind of just, I mean, it was both to write against the history that was presented in the Dobbs case, which I think many, many historians um, in other publications too have said, you know, this is fundamentally incorrect. Um, but it was also just kind of to model how you can't, how you should be doing or can be doing history of the sorts, how you have to look at the broader context at what words people would have used at what phrases at the euphemisms and such. Mm -hmm. And the the botany component of it, um, was this part of your research and scholarship uh, prior to the article? Had you been looking at, at plant medicine more broadly? Yeah, so more broadly. Um, but, so I tended, I, I, I've written about botany and about herbs. I had focused when I was doing my research at Dumbart and Oaks, I'd written a lot about turmeric and other herbs. So I was familiar with the kind of sources. Um, and when I was at, when I was working at the Folger Shakespeare Library, I was also just looking at these manuscript receipt books. So I had familiarity with the sources we were using, but I hadn't previously looked at abortifacients. Um, whereas Ashley had, I'm, she has a PhD in history um, focused on early modern Italy and medicine and botany. And she had previously written some blog posts and some other pieces about dittany, which we mentioned in the article as an abortifacient. So she had been thinking about these things. And I had been thinking about kind of more broadly the sources too as well. And so we paired up and co-wrote it together and it was a really wonderful experience. And a tremendous, tremendous article show. Um, more from volume 11 here. 